you're listening to Fast Facts Perio Edition. And now, here's your host, Katrina Sanders. Hello, and welcome to Fast Facts Perio Edition. This week, we're going to look at type 2 diabetics and some of the new interesting pieces of information that are coming down about the extent that diabetes can affect the subgingival biofilm composition of a patient who has periodontitis. Now, okay, this is extremely controversial. Remember, when we talk about periodontitis, it's important to know that we look at the fact that periodontal disease is considered a polymicrobial complex disease process, meaning this particular disease process is really developed from a maturation in the subgingival microbiota. So your biofilm begins with your health producing bacteria. That health producing bacteria in high concentrations is able to maintain symbiosis. That health producing bacteria stabilizes pH and creates synergies in the oral cavity. When these health producing bacteria predominate, we can oftentimes see a control of disease. It's when we start to see the introduction of periopathogenic bacteria. So this is where you see your Actinomyces series starting to become introduced. Actinomyces species, A. nasilendi, A. israeli, those are the bacteria that start to cause gingivitis. And then we start to see the transition or the movement into periodontitis with our orange and red complex bacteria. When we see these higher proportions of actinomyces, purple, green complex, and red complex changes, this is where we start to see shifts in how disease begins to form. Remember, your green complex, your health producing, your red complex, disease producing, that is your spectrum that you're looking at. And depending on that spectrum of bacteria, gosh, you would expect to see dramatic changes in how the body responds to disease. Well, interestingly enough, there was a research study recently done and published in May of 2023 that looked at 40 specific biomarker bacterial species and their relationship inside of the subgingival microbiota of non-diabetic and type 2 diabetic patients. So they compare biofilm samples in both shallow and deep sites with these patients. And they wanted to better understand what the subgingival biofilm samples look like in a normal glycemic and in a type 2 diabetic. What they found was actually quite interesting. In the shallow and deep sites of your normoglycemic groups, we found that most of those bacterial species were certainly your disease-producing bacterial species. However, on the other side of the coin, when we looked at our type 2 diabetic patients, we found that there were extremely high proportions of actinomyces, lower proportions of red complex bacteria than our normal glycemic patients. I'll say that again. Our type 2 diabetics actually had lower concentrations of red complex bacteria when we compared those with our normal glycemic patients. How is it that a type 2 diabetic could have lower concentrations of red complex bacteria versus our non-diabetics. Well, what we found inside of this particular study is that patients who have type 2 diabetes have less dysbiotic biofilm when compared with a normal glycemic patient, meaning it requires such low levels or such low proportions of pathogens in the mouth of a diabetic to cause the same level of disease that it does in a normal glycemic patient. Let's say this in another way. A patient who is not diabetic for them to present with, and this particular study looked at severe periodontitis. So for a non-diabetic patient to have severe periodontitis, they must have incrementally higher proportions of red complex bacteria 
than a type two diabetic who has the same amount of disease. That diabetic is going to have remarkably less amounts of pathogenic bacteria. It really starts to color this picture a bit differently. When we take a look at particularly those practices out there who are doing biological or salivary biomarking testing, it is important to notate that your diabetic patients will likely present with same levels of severity of disease, but smaller concentrations or smaller amounts of pathogenic species. We recognize inside of our type 2 diabetics that it is the exaggerated host response to a small presence of disease-producing bacteria that is causing such a dynamically dramatic response that it shows up as severe periodontitis, very similar to that of somebody who has proportionately higher bacteria, but a normal glycemic control. And so when we take a look at these biomarker bacterial species, which is where we're seeing some trends starting to move, we are actively looking at microbial analysis of subgingival plaque samples for individuals across a myriad of different systemic diseases. When we see a focus on bacterial species alone, it is important to note that in your immunocompromised patient populations, type 2 diabetics specifically, as we're seeing here in this research study, that they may not have such dramatically high concentrations of bacteria, but rather because of their delayed wound healing, because of how vulnerable those diabetic tissues are when a wound happens in the oral cavity, because of how susceptible these individuals are to disease, we can see such a dramatic display of disease with such a low amount of bacteria. So it's important to notate as we look forward, now the questions are coming out inside of research. So what will the subgingival biofilm composition look like in an HIV positive patient with severe periodontitis, in a rheumatoid arthritis patient when they present with severe periodontitis when compared with a non-RA patient. We're starting to look at cardiovascular diseased patients and wanting to understand how much more susceptible these individuals are to an exaggerated response of disease. So now on the clinical side, we need to start identifying with our immunocompromised or immunosuppressed patients, how does their body respond to wound healing? Now, instead of assuming that these patients have high levels of bacterial pathogenic markers in their oral cavity, now we need to better understand how does the immune response show up for these patients? Now, Clinicians are going to begin asking questions like, if you get a cut on your arm or your leg, how quickly does that cut heal? Or how delayed is that wound healing for you? If you experience a hygiene visit, do you experience delayed bleeding or delayed open wounds or open ulcers after you've received care in a dental practice that could tell us a lot of information about how susceptible and how delayed that immune response is. Now we're starting to critically look at this data and it's telling us that it may not just be bacteria alone, but rather how the body responds to the large or small presence of bacteria that will give us a lot of information about how to develop a patient-centric care plan. This has been another episode of Fast Facts Perio Edition with Katrina Sanders. Please feel free to reach me on Instagram at the dental wine genist or on my website, www.katrinasanders.com. Cheers.